I'm Jeff. My wife and I host Message of Hope. Message of Hope wants to be your weekly inspirational, motivational, and non judgmental friend to help you through your week as we share Bible truth and life experiences to let you know you're not alone. Let's join Sandra to see what Message of Hope she has today. Hello, I'm Sandra. In the Ten Commandments series, we talked about honoring your father and mother. And as Mother's Day approaches, I just wanted to give a big shout out to my mom. She was the one that held our family together and reminded us, or should I say, coaxed us into doing things that were family related. Things like she'd remind us of a sister, a brother, an uncle, or a cousin's birthday. And she'd regularly talk with them and keep connected with them to know what was going on in their lives. And then she would relay that information to us so we would know about it. And she would let us know when we should visit them or send that card. About once a month growing up, we would have a family meal. I don't recall anyone saying we all had to be there. But you just knew mom and dad wanted you there for that meal. Of course, I was the baby of five, so I was already there most times. But my married brother and sister and their families would come. And there was always a great meal around the big oval table after we prayed. And my father would be seated at the head of the table. And my mom was usually up waiting on everyone. And most of the time, we really enjoyed the time together. Also, once a year, there was a family reunion of both my mom and my dad's side. Man, I remember I loved those family reunions. You'd meet all kinds of cousins that you didn't know existed, and everyone there showed kindness and love toward you because you were family. Everybody who came brought a dish, and we'd meet at some public park and Several picnic tables would have to be put together to hold all the dishes of food. It was quite a spread. I remember I would always look for and anticipate eating the deviled eggs. All the family members that were talented would bring their instruments, and we'd have a concert of different music played and sung, and most times I'd be amused by those, you know, kind of weird distant cousins that would get up and dance in front of everybody like they thought they were on American Bandstand. Us kids would run and play, and as I was closing my eyes this morning, I can still feel the warmth of the sun. I can smell that freshly mowed grass, see that big spread of food. I can hear the rumble of everybody talking and laughing and the band as they'd start playing. Gosh, those were good old days and much simpler times. I never hear of family reunions anymore. I guess that passed away with that generation. But I wonder why that is. Why, myself, I didn't learn the steps to bringing the family together so that that tradition could continue for my kids and grandkids. Oh, well. At that time, I also didn't understand how important these things were. As a child at these reunions, sometimes I was kind of bored when the reporting about our family crest and how the people assigned to research our family genealogy were doing on the project at those reunions. I understand now that it was a thread that held families together and how this type of event helped you feel part of something bigger and more important, family that there's other family out there if you needed them, that you are a part of this big, wonderful, crazy group of people who are carrying your family name forward, that there were others who cared for you and would cheer you on, and you anticipated seeing again next year to share your accomplishments with. I guess you could say it was your smaller world in this gigantic world, and it made a lasting impression on me. As I reflect back, I can now see how my mom was always steering us in the right direction. Even as adults, she would let us know in her own way that she wasn't thrilled with the life choice we were making, or would mention a scripture in the Bible to plant a seed on how we might need to choose more wisely. She was truly the rudder on my ship, constantly steering me in the right direction. Many times I have wished she'd quit imposing her ideas of a right kind of life on me. But now I see, without that persistence, I'm sorry for getting emotional, but without her persistence, 
without that awareness of choices I was making, without her influence of making good ones, I might have chosen wrong ones even more often. We need more family involvement today. Seems back then you more easily understood your choices affect more people than just yourself. And there's no way to count all the times I would overhear adults talking about how their child was going to run their family's name if they kept behaving that way. You don't hear that kind of thing today. My mom taught me the truth about the living God and the importance in being actively involved in a church where the whole truth is taught and not just someone's opinion or their interpretation of the Bible. Something struck me this morning. Throughout my childhood and adulthood, any time you'd visit my mother's house, the Bible was open on the dining room table where she sat. Many times she'd be sitting there when you stopped by to visit. It wasn't a decoration. It was open. It was tattered. It was used regularly. I never thought about that much at those times. It's just the way it was at her house. I suppose that, too, was making an unstated impression on me that I hadn't realized until this day, and that she was probably reading it just before I had arrived on all those visits. Yep, my mom was a warrior and a hero. She had to quit school at a very young age in order to help her father raise tobacco. I believe it was at 10, but I saw no signs of that in her abilities. And she also withstood a lot in her life. Her husband going off to World War II and the after effects of his time there after his return. She kept five children clean and fed with three cooked meals a day, plus dessert after dinner. She was an immaculate housekeeper and everything was in order. She lived through losing a child who was only six years old to leukemia. She overcame the struggles of raising children and the weariness that can bring to your heart. She kept everything together during my dad's three different heart attacks while dealing with her own health problems and all her kids. In hindsight, she was a truly amazing woman, worthy and due all respect. But as we got older and married, we didn't visit as much as we could have or should have. There is one major mistake I saw my mom make that I was sure I didn't want to repeat as an adult. I'm sure if she could have relived her life in this one area, she would have done it differently too. And that is this. I recall many times throughout my life hearing my father say, Francis, come in here and watch TV with me. And I would hear her reply, In a minute, Bill, I've got to do whatever first and then I'll be in there. She always made it in there with him, but only after some time had passed. Many years later, my dad was in the hospital after his last heart attack. He was recovering well and was expected to come home in a day or two. I was an adult, and I was staying with Mom for a few days while Dad was in the hospital. And I'll never forget the sound of the phone ringing early that morning as I lay in the spare room. I heard my mom answer. I heard my mom scream and begin to weep uncontrollably. And I went to her to learn that, yes, my worst fear had come true. My dad was gone. He had passed away. His health had taken a turn during the night, and he didn't recover. And I realized there was no way to comfort her, no way to take her back in time so she could sit down one more time to watch TV with her man and spend time. Those opportunities had just ended with that phone call. Another huge influence in my life right there. This life passes quickly. It's over before you know it. Remember earlier when I was telling you that I was a little forgetful and my mom had reminded me of different things? Well. The last thing I want to share is this. My sweet mama passed away on my birthday. I had a difficult time enjoying birthdays after that. But my sister encouraged me that it was a perfect day because it was the same day she had gifted me with life. And she joked with me that she knew I'd never forget the date she passed 
if it was on a day I'd remember. So to honor my mother this year, I'm asking myself, what will my kids, my loved ones, see when they take a look back over my life after I'm gone? You see, I've learned that in our lifetime, we're either influencing someone else or we're allowing them to influence us. Someone is always watching, whether you realize it or not. And as long as we have the precious, God-given gift of life, we still have time to keep writing or to begin rewriting our story. To every mom out there, thank you and happy Mother's Day. That's all I have for today. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next week, Godspeed.